These are sort of junior iron ore miners, the ramp up and increasing in production and their plans to do so is very important for the outlook for their share price. Today saw we saw a big drop in first half profits, uh, down to almost $6 million, though this did include a one-off big charge of $63 million uh, loss on the sale of its magnetite projects as well as transaction costs. If we actually un look at the underlying profit here, that was up 77%. Uh, revenues were also up 69% and the company confirmed its guidance of 5.5 to 5.7 million tons of iron ore for the full financial year. So production is expected to rise to 12 million tons per annum by 2013 and then up to 22 million tons per annum by 2015 as planned. So a combination of its large tenement position as well as its port capacity uh, really will underpin the long-term growth for Atlas Iron. Uh, it does have relatively low cash costs, around $45 per tonne, uh, around $380 million in cash at the moment and no debt. So this good, this good balance, uh, balance sheet position uh, will certainly be enough to uh, expand its capacity to 15 million tonnes, though longer term expansion onto that, uh, on top of that will certainly need further, further capital. Um, it, uh, it's very important to Atlas Iron is its port allocation, which is 46 million tonnes. Now this port allocation, as well as its growth, uh, its growth opportunities uh, does make it a bit of an attractive takeover target. Uh, one thing with, iron, uh, with Atlas Iron, it does produce a lower grade iron ore, around 58% iron, uh, below the 62% the spot price is based on. Now while they have been uh, receiving relatively good prices for this, um, in times if iron ore supply does uh, take a turn, uh, this lower grade iron ore will become less attractive. But uh, really another big issue for Atlas Iron will be looking for will be a rail project for its operations. It has several options there, whether it builds its own dedicated Atlas Iron line, uh, whether it be a joint venture with Hancock, or whether they uh, look at some haulage contracts with the likes of B BHP or, or Hancock. But this will definitely be a big factor in underpinning longer term growth. Uh, and it's definitely not out of the realm of possibility of around 40 million tonnes per annum over the next five to 10 years for Atlas Iron. Okay, just quickly, um, another story is that we got this new U.S. Uh, pending home sales index last night showing a bit of an uptick. But I guess if you look at Borel and James Hardy results, clearly there's still a very long way to go for the U.S. market to return. Certainly is. We've seen continued weakness in housing and construction, both domestically and in the U.S. As you did mention, we saw an uptick in home sales for the previous month in the U.S., but that really just offset the 2% drop we saw the month before. So Borel's net profit after tax, that was up 65% uh, to $153 million, but this was due to a one-off $86 million gain. If we actually look at the underlying result, which is, tells a bit more of a tells a bit more of the story here. That was down 28% to $67 million, though they did hit guidance. Uh, we saw a huge decrease in their net operating cash flows. Uh, this was down to $1.7 million, uh, really on the back of uh, uh, net debt increase, as well as um, some increasing inventories. But uh, you can see the difficulties if you have a look at the breakdown in earnings for Borrell. Uh, we saw all of their sectors bar, uh, I think it was building materials, all fell. So we saw cement, beer, uh, building products, and Borrell USA, all those earnings all fell in the okay. sectors. Uh, so we've definitely seen subdued, uh, subdued activity in Australia and the US in terms of constructions. And in the US, this was certainly reflected across mm -hmm. James Hardy's results as well. Their biggest earnings come from the US as well. The Asia Pacific region for James Hardy continued to perform quite well, but the US certainly let them down. Uh, so comments from James Hardy was also quite uh, downbeat. They were mm -hmm. certainly saying that at the moment there's no real sustained uh, advances in the US housing market at the moment. Uh, what we're seeing is just a bit of positive data, but in the longer term we're waiting definitely for a better reversal in these markets for James Hardy and Borrell to really take off again.